Hey, Carl, you there? Where the hell are you, for God's sake? I've been trying to reach you since yesterday. Is everything okay? We scheduled that meeting with both our parents tomorrow. Don't say you forgot about that. We confirmed a schedule the other day just in case. You're not in some kind of trouble, are you? I got a call from your mom today, too. She was saying she couldn't get a hold of you at all. She was really worried. I think she was texting you every 10 minutes. Where the hell are you? You know your parents live really far away. It was also hard for them to get a connecting flight here. They took the time and trouble to come out here to meet us. The least you can do is contact them and put them at ease. Come on, Carl, what's the deal? I'm sure you know, but we're meeting at 11 p.m. at the Italian restaurant on 5th Street. You know the place. We had dinner there last month. Don't be late. I'll be outside waiting for you just in case. You better show up, Carl. Don't be late. I mean it. And wear that gray suit like we discussed. Carl, come on, answer me. Where the hell are you? I thought I told you to be here. It's way past 11. It's almost noon. We couldn't wait any longer, so we already ordered. Where the hell are you? What's up? Did something happen? Are you in trouble or something? Is your phone out of order? I got a hold of your coworker and he tells me you've been coming to work every day. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. You work yesterday and went home at the usual time, according to him. You do know I've been sending you text messages. It's all been saved. Check your incoming text record. You must be seeing it, right? If you don't have an issue with your line app, I would really appreciate it if you would contact me. I'm sure our folks feel the same way, so please, everyone is super worried. Oh, hey, that you, Brenda? I see you've been texting me all morning. I forgot to charge it last night, sorry about that. Carl, where have you been? We've been worried sick. I've been right here. Been a while, huh? Been a while? Are you out of your mind? You sound like you just woke up or something. Why the devil may care attitude? I sent you countless messages. You haven't forgotten what day it is, have you? Both our parents are here at the Italian restaurant. We scheduled this meeting months ago. Pardon me? The Italian what? Why are you having Italian now? Are you at the place on 5th Street? Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember now. <laughs> what an idiot. I sent you a line message yesterday. By the sound of it, you haven't read it. I don't believe this. What's wrong with you, Carl? I'm sorry. What can I say? Where the hell are you right now? What were you doing all this time? I've never known you to be this forgetful. Uh, let's see. How should I put this? I finished work, then I met up with some buddies. And then we ended up at my friend's place, and we started drinking there, which lasted until... maybe 7 a.m. or so? Hang on. What? You were drinking with your buddies? You guys were up until 7 a.m. drinking? Do you have some sort of mental defect, Carl? Yeah, well, what can I say? I just wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> you know, this getting married and all, I figured it would be the last time. You know, night out with the guys. Is that why you couldn't contact us? You were too drunk? Is that the reason for making us all worry? Really? Yeah, well, not only that, but I was busy at work too. Been doing a lot of overtime. I have the big project we're working on. Yeah, it's really stressful. If you're talking about now, well, I was drinking with my buddies. I got a lot going on. Do I really have to explain all this to you right now? So what time are you going to get here? Everyone is waiting for you. We already ordered coffee, but we can have coffee when you get here. If you get here, that is. Huh? Get where? I'm not going anywhere. The meeting with our parents? What? Are you still drunk? Oh, yeah, about that. Got super throbbing headache at the moment. You know what, Brenda? Uh, can we just cancel that? I really don't think I can make it. Anyway, I would have to get up, shower, shave, and change. Catch a cab there. I'll never make it. Huh? Am I hearing you right? Back up a bit, would you? You're not coming? Is that what you're saying? Uh, we drank until morning, and I'm super tired. I haven't slept a wink, and this hangover is killing me. And I'm ready to throw up. So, sorry about this, but... Apologize to our folks for me, would ya? What the hell are you talking about, Carl? Everyone is already here. We're all waiting on you for God's sake. Your folks flew in from the East Coast. They finally got a connecting flight here. Come on, Brenda. Relax. No need to get all hot under the collar. There's plenty of time later. It doesn't have to be today. Just reschedule. We'll do it next week or something, no problem. Are you serious? What do you think this is? This is really important to me. We're talking about us getting married. 
Oh yeah, did we reserve a private room at the restaurant? I'll pay for that later on, so... And the whole bill, it's on me! No need to worry about that. What do you say? Everything good to go, huh? I don't care if you pay or not. That's not what I'm saying. Come on, Brenda, you're really giving me a splitting headache right about now. I'd rather not hear it. And like I said, my stomach is acting up and don't want to see last night's dinner. I bet it's just you and your mom anyways, am I right? Just have a nice lunch with her, why don't you? Um, what? Yeah, she really wanted to meet you. See you in person. I only had good things to say about you, so she wanted to check you out herself. She'll be disappointed. I'm doing you a favor, Brenda. I'm marrying someone from a not-so-well-to-do family. You should actually be grateful to me. Just do as I say and let this go, would ya? Pardon me? That really wasn't called for. How could you say that? Are you saying I'm poor? Just because I'm from a single-parent home doesn't make me some sort of pauper that needs a handout. I want you to apologize. No need to get all steamed up about it, Brenda. Just cancel the damn meeting for today. Reschedule it, would ya? You're there at the restaurant now. Make another appointment for next week or something. My friends and I are too wasted to even get out of bed. No way I'm making it over there anytime soon. So please, take care of it. Let's talk about this later, huh? You have no intention of coming today. Is that final? Ugh, don't go psycho on me now. What's the big deal anyways? You know what? I'm about to conk out again. I can hardly keep my damn eyes open. The meeting has been terminated. It's no more. Loud and clear? Tell my folks and your mom to rest up and we'll do this again another day. Simple. Am I getting my point across to you? Yeah, if that's the way you want it. Loud and clear, Lord and Master. That was an important day for me, and I hope you will take responsibility for ruining everything. And you will, I assure you. Yeah, yeah, I hear you loud and clear. Can I go now? Hey, Brenda, how you doing? Sorry about the other day. Uh, let's reschedule the meeting we were supposed to have a few days ago. What are you saying, huh? Did you make that reservation at the Italian place, or did you change venues? Reschedule? What are you talking about? That was a few days ago. You didn't show up, remember? Oh, come on, Brenda. The parents' meeting we were supposed to reschedule. You know, the meeting where our parents are supposed to meet before we get married. Haven't had your morning coffee yet, I see. <laughs> Unlike your mom, who is a single mom, according to you. On the other hand, my dad runs his own business, so he's super busy. Just hope he has the time. What's your mom do? Part-time at the supermarket? Anyway, I hope my dad can work it into his schedule. Oh, really? Yeah, busy dad. He told me all about it. Good to know. I finally understand why my mom insisted that I not reveal who she really is during the meeting. That there was plenty of time to do it later. Uh, right. What the hell are you talking about? Reveal what? That she's a cashier? Come on, Brenda, it makes sense, would ya? Just cut to the chase. My mother also runs her own business. Wait a second. So, are you saying your mom has her own company? That she's, what, the president of a company? Yeah, she's the current CEO of Trend International. I'm sure you've heard of it. I mean, you work with them, is what I heard. Hang on a second, Trend International? You can't be serious, not that Trend International. <sighs> Come to think of it... You guys do have the same last name. Why didn't you tell me this before? Yeah, well, it's a pretty common last name, so maybe you didn't put two and two together. But to be honest, I thought you worked it out. Guess I was wrong about you. In more ways than one, it turns out. Trend International does business with your company. You're one of their major clients, if I'm correct. And I hear you're the account manager, is that right? Yeah, well, I was the project. But you don't seem to be doing a very good job. At least that's what I hear screwed up some major deals several months ago. Uh, where'd you hear that? That deal was not under my supervision. That was... Uh... You apparently tried to seduce a rep from Trend International on that project last month. It got so hard that she was subsequently replaced with a male rep. That's what I heard. Not a very good look, to say the least. But you didn't learn your lesson, did you? Every time you visited the Trend headquarters, you would try to pick up on the receptionist. Did you know that there were many complaints to the HR department about your antics, Carl? So don't try to deny it. But one young woman got snared in your little sweet-talking trap. You canceled that meeting a few days ago and went on a little three-day romp with your newfound bedfellow. What was her name? Was it Sarah Conway by any chance? It says here she's 28 years old, currently front desk receptionist at Trend International. And also, she's been at her position for over two years. Huh? How'd you know that? Who told you about her? That's confidential, you know? 
You also know that she's married, right? Well, it seems Sarah's not too shy about having all kinds of lovers despite being married. Yes, Carl, she's married. Or did you already know that? She was telling all her co-workers about you and your little sexual escapades. As a matter of fact, she seemed to relish telling everyone about her romantic exploits. Why the hell did she go and do that, for God's sake? That rumor spread throughout the office and finally reached my mom, the CEO of Trend International. That was a few days before that meeting we were supposed to have, and which you failed to show up. She prepared some simple business cards just for the meeting. Cards that don't indicate her CEO status, mind you. She wanted to see your reaction when she met you, see if you would lie through your teeth, which I imagine would probably have been the case. And we know how that turned out. You canceled and went on your little love fest and didn't show. There was really no need for her to meet you. She knew right then and there what kind of person you were. A despicable scoundrel is what she perceived you to be. Hold on a second. Before you continue, where did you even hear that I went on a trip with Sarah? She's been uploading all kinds of photos on Instagram. Instagram? The social media app for photos and videos? Yeah, my mom has an account too. So she found your page when you were having fun at some ritzy resort somewhere. Sarah was uploading photos saying it was a trip with her girlfriends, but for some reason, you always seem to appear in the background of every photo. Oh, I told her not to upload those photos for God's sakes. She was always snapping pictures and uploading them. I told her not to take any of me. My mom even checked when the photos were taken, and lo and behold, the exact same time as the meeting. Who would have thought? What they can do nowadays is simply amazing. That's when we all determined that you were the good-for-nothing scoundrel we all suspected. I made my decision right then and there. No marriage for me, thank you. I don't want anything more to do with you. Come on, Brenda, scoundrel, really? That's going a bit too far, don't you think? And the photos? That could possibly be someone else. Someone that just looks just like me. What's the big deal? You want to break up just for that? Come on, grow up, Brenda. This is just a little fling. It won't affect our marriage. I told you about how Sarah blabbed about everything. Are you saying that's not enough proof? It's not only that. My mom says she's going to show me later today, but apparently she has an infinite amount of evidence of your cheating and bad behavior. You're kidding me, right? Did she hire a private eye or something? You trapped me, that's what you did! Anyways, we were never really officially engaged. It was just all a verbal agreement, and we never had any physical relationship to speak of. So, rest assured, I don't plan on getting a cent from you. Although I did talk to her lawyer and he said I could pursue some sort of legal process, but I decided against it. Really? I appreciate that. But you're forgetting Sarah. She's married and her husband is not all that happy about what you did. I would be surprised if he didn't hire a lawyer and made you pay for ruining his marriage. That's what most people would do given the circumstances. Oh shit, he's hiring a lawyer? Has he already retained one? Do you know him? You better ask him. I don't have anything to do with it. I recommend you pay your dues, Carl. Damn it, are you serious? I can't afford this. What am I gonna do? Oh, what a friggin' mess. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one important point. Maybe you better sit down first. Her father, David Conway? I was informed that he's your immediate boss, is that right? The story goes that he was a project manager last year and met his wife while visiting Trent International. No way, that can't be right! He's Sarah's husband? Do you realize that Mr. Conway is related to the president? His nephew or something? He could be CEO someday! He could get me fired on the spot if he wanted. My god, Carl, you sure got a lot on your plate. I really wouldn't want to be in your shoes right about now. What's with the devil-may-care attitude? I'm up Shit's Creek for sure! Why is everything stacked against me for God's sakes? Hey, did I mention that I don't care? I told you I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Figure it out for yourself, Carl. I terminated this relationship. Have you already forgotten? Why should I care what some stranger thinks or does? Come on, Brenda. Don't be like that. Help me out here. Please forgive me. I was not thinking straight. I should have been there for you. I should have gone to the meeting. My bad. You're the only one in this world that I love. Please, give me another chance. I promise you, I will never cheat on you again. I swear to God, cross my heart and hope to die. So please, I'm pleading with you, Brenda. Please, help me out here. What am I going to do from now on? Brenda, please! I just got fired from my job. Can you believe it? I'm out of a job. What the hell am I going to do? Ugh, not you again, Carl. I was sure you were gone from my life. Why'd you have to contact me again? 
I thought I said I wanted nothing more to do with you. I thought I'd clean my hands of you. I finally found time to relax and think about my future, and you have to ruin everything. You're really good at ruining things, you know that, Carl? But I had nobody else to turn to. You're the only person left in my life. My folks completely cut me off. They want nothing to do with me. They were furious that I didn't show up to that meeting and then all that followed. I tried apologizing, but I just wouldn't listen. Yeah, well, you had it coming. Take it like a man, Carl. I mean, think about it. You seduce the receptionist at one of your top customers, and then it turns out that this receptionist is your boss's wife. I mean, come on! What did you think would happen? But I had no idea! How was I supposed to know? It's not like I planned it this way. That's your problem, Carl. You never plan anything. But you did know that she was married. That alone makes you culpable. But why did I have to lose my job? I mean, come on. I was pretty good at it. They could have at least had me transferred to some affiliate or something. But outright fired? Why? So, what do you want? Why'd you text me? I'm not doing anything for you, Carl. I told you that. And that's final. I really don't have time for this. Stop mucking around for Pete's sake. I had all this time on my hands and I just got to thinking. Maybe there was a reason why I was fired. Maybe it's a chance of some kind. A chance to redeem myself. It's God's way of saying, go for it, Carl. You got what it takes. Like he's telling me to take this chance. Chance? What are you talking about? Your mom's company, Trend International. I'll take over on her behalf. What do you say? I think I'm ready to check out. I know God's talking to you and all, but have you totally lost it? Why would you even think that? Just think about it. You're working in a completely different field, right? You have no plans or any desire to become the company CEO, right? No, I have no such intention. You're right about that. Well then, that makes everything so much easier. I was in charge of several accounts of Trend International, as you probably know. Which means I know this business inside and out. I know the people in charge and how the entire business structure works. Long story short, you and I get married and I take over as CEO and the company is headed towards success. Pretty good, huh? This is a chance of a lifetime. You really must have come down with something. Maybe you should see a doctor. You know, the type that examines your brain. Or maybe God's just giving you bad advice. I'm fine. What are you talking about? As for the next in line to take over as CEO, there's already two highly eligible candidates ready in the wings to take over. You're probably asking who? I bet you want to know. Actually, I don't know, but I know that it's still a long way off. There's plenty of time to decide. They're going to prove themselves for the next few years. It's not as easy as just taking over. They have to demonstrate their abilities in the coming years. And the best man will be chosen to take over as CEO of Trend International. That's how things are done in business, Carl. You can't just be handed an important position like that. You have to earn it. Huh? Sounds like a useless, long, drawn-out process. If you and I marry, I can take over the business, no problem. Am I getting this right? What did I just say? You think if you marry the president's daughter that you would automatically become the company's CEO? Yeah, sounds like the prudent thing to do. No need for all the fuss. I have experience with Trend International. I know the ins and outs and have the connections. What more do you want? My mom doesn't want a fake ornamental person in that position. Fake? Ornamental? Are you insinuating that I would be some kind of decoration? That I would be a king with no clothes? Exactly. She doesn't want some self-important guy with mediocre business skills to be lounging in the presidential office acting as though he's earned the right. She wants someone with charisma, someone with the skill to motivate the employees, someone with a sound business mind, not a deadbeat like you. Uh, but I could. And most importantly, not some guy who would cheat on his fiancée and have an affair with a married woman. And the fact that you knew she was a married and seduced her, anyway, I mean, how low can you get? I want nothing to do with you and neither does my mom, which means Trend International. Come on, Brenda, give me a break, would you, please? I'm in a real jam right now. I won't have money, but then I get this letter from Conway's lawyer demanding payment for damages. What's more, Sarah got divorced and had nowhere to go, so now she's living with me. She lost her job at Trend International, too. We're both out of a job. How are we supposed to live? She also got taken for all she had, so she got completely cleaned out. Our future looks totally bleak, and I mean bleak as hell. You've got to help us out, Brenda. You guys are really in a super tight spot, but like I keep saying, what the hell does this have to do with me? Huh? How can you say that? We were going to get married. We hit it off once. Let's try again. One last chance, please, Brenda. Goodbye, Carl. 
Wait, Brenda, please! I immediately blocked him after that. I really should have done it way sooner. It was like I peeked into a deep black hole of despair, like I was going to get sucked right in. And I also still felt a little frightened. I mean, he was pretty frantic the last time we talked. I always found myself looking over my shoulder whenever I went out, thinking he might pop up from around the corner at any time. I talked to my boss at the office about my predicament, and he suggested I take a position at one of their branch offices in another state. But what really piqued my interest is that they even had a company dormitory available. So, after some thought, I took up his offer. It was pretty hectic, but I packed up all my meager belongings and finally moved in the other day. Fortunately, it seems I was saved in the nick of time. A friend informed me that Carl came to my old apartment and started banging on my door late at night. Apparently had, apparently had a little too much to drink. I was long gone, so the place was totally empty, but that didn't deter him one bit. He climbed onto the second floor veranda and broke in, smashing the glass in the process. As you can imagine, the neighbors called the cops thinking it was a burglar, and he was caught red-handed and hauled away to jail. I thought he would just be released to his parents or something, but it turns out he was thrown into some sort of facility. Not exactly a prison, but close. Just hope that place knocks some sense into him. Hey, Mark! Mark, my old pal! Mark, say something! Don't ignore me! What? I'm not ignoring you. What's up, amigo? Finally! Why haven't you written back? Why? Do you seriously not know why? It's a weekday. Huh? It's noon on a weekday, dude. I'm hard at work. Eh, yeah, really? It's a weekday? You're working? Yup, it's a weekday. Not just that, it's Wednesday. Literally the middle of the week. I'm right in the middle of work. No kidding. I have no idea what day it is. Sorry. I know you're a freelancer, but you should really get out of the house every once in a while. And company drone should take some time to relax at home. Come to think of it, I haven't really had any real time off lately. Let's grab a drink sometime. Yeah, let's booze it up. Let's go. I've really been wanting to chat about old times. Oh, <laughs> you always talk about the same stuff every time I see you. It's always old middle school track stories or something. Yeah, because those were great times. Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> anyway, this time I've got something else to tell you. Kind of an important announcement. Big news! Is that what's got you so excited? Yep. I'd like to meet up and tell you in person. Hmm, a big announcement. Sounds intriguing. Can you just tell me now? Eh, I can wait until we meet up. Besides, you're in the middle of work, right? Focus on work, office boy. Actually, I'm officially on my lunch break right now, so let's hear it. Well, if you're so eager that you can't even work, then I guess I could tell you. I'm married. Chad, a married man. Wait, you're married? You said you are married? Not getting married? That's right. I should have told you sooner, I know. But I'm married. Plus one to the Berg family. Well, kinda. Maybe minus one? What do you mean, minus one? Did you take her name or something? Actually, yeah. Ah, oh, nice. Well, anyway, congrats. Actually, perfect timing. I guess there's something I should probably tell you, too. Oh, yeah? You got news as well? Good news, bad news? Good news. Actually, I'm married also. Not on paper, but common law. Ah, congratulations! Common law is getting pretty common recently, I heard. <laughs> Since a lot of people don't want to change the name anyway. Yeah, we thought about it a bit. But she's got a pretty rare last name, so she doesn't really want to change it. And my parents don't care about passing on the family name or anything. 
Oh, your wife has an interesting last name, too? Too? Your wife has an interesting last name? Yeah, and since I'm the second son anyway, and she didn't want to change her name, I figured I might as well take hers. So we've both got married around the same time to women with interesting names. <laughs> That's why I was such good friends. We've always been totally in sync. So what's she like? She's perfect. Humble, sweet, cute. Always smells like flowers. <laughs> smells like flowers? Sounds like you're pretty bewitched. Nah, <laughs> maybe. Do you know Karen from the flower shop by the library? Yeah, that's my wife, actually. What about her? Your wife. She's my wife. Huh? What the fuck? You mean P.P. Flowers, near the library? Yeah, Karen. Wait, wait, wait. Her last name is Power? Uh, yeah. Karen Power. Your wife? Same. What the fuck? That's my wife. No. No, that's my wife. Uh, maybe there's two Karen Powers that work at the flower shop? There's no way. Oh, I have a headache. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. A bad feeling? This is a nightmare. Uh, let me message her. It's better if you don't say anything. Does she live with you? Uh, okay. Are you alright? You know what? Let's meet up after you finish work. We should get all the facts straight. Got it. Good idea. I really have to get back to work right now or I'm gonna get canned. I'll message you when I'm done. Hey, babe. Hey, sweetie. How was your day? You're off today, right? Um, it's a weekday, so I had to work as usual. Where are you? I'm just at home. Why? I just felt like talking with you. Ah, that's so sweet. We're married, right? Even though I'm not changing my name, we are still married. Thank you for being so understanding about this. Of course, I definitely got not wanting to change your name. But I've got something that I want to ask you. I was just wondering if you had dated anyone else before me. Especially if there was anyone you considered getting married to. Are you jealous? <laughs> That's so cute. Of course I dated people before you. But you're the first person I ever got as far as even thinking about marrying. Oh, really? I was the first person you ever thought about marrying? So there's no reason to be jealous. Anyway, Karen, you're not hiding anything from me, are you? What do you mean? Well, I saw... Saw what? It's going back a bit, but didn't you pass by my office about two weeks ago? I looked out the window and I saw you walking by with some guy. Oh, sorry. Actually, I've got an older brother. A brother? Sorry I didn't tell you. But like you said, I went out with my brother about two weeks ago. I guess we did pass right by your office then. Looking at it now, I can see why you might have been jealous. But it was just my brother. So please don't be jealous. Ah, oh, I'm so worried now. Ah, okay, it was your brother. Would you mind telling me what his name is? His name? Well... What do you mean, well? Oh, nothing, nothing. Chad. His name's Chad. Ah, bingo! Actually, I got a message from Chad today. He said he got married. You see where this is going, right? He said his wife's name was Karen Power. And that she works at the flower shop near the library. Now, why do you think he would tell me that his wife has the same name and job as you? 
Um, no idea. Uh, hold on. Actually, there's another girl at my work with the same name. That's enough, don't you think? Fun's over. I lied about seeing you near my work two weeks ago. But it's true that you walked by with Chad, isn't it? He told me. Don't even bother with excuses. Chad and I have been friends since middle school. What? Why did you lie? Why did you do this? Uh, what a pain. What? After I went through all the trouble of finding both a poor but reliable salary man and a highly paid freelancer. You guys are friends from school. Are you kidding me? He did my research and everything. And then dropped the ball right in front of the end zone. Maybe start with a little bit of remorse before you start your analysis? Ugh. I was gonna make bank off you idiots. This is just great. Okay, so this is the real you then? Me and Chad were just there to line your wallet? This is ridiculous. Well, I'm hot. And that's all that really matters in this world. When you're hot, you can get away with anything. Well, as long as you only mess with stupid guys. <laughs> Didn't you realize you'd get caught? Like I said, not by stupid guys. <laughs> Setting you aside, Chad is head over heels for me. He'll lap up even the worst excuse. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> anyway, I've got no use for you anymore, so take a hike. You know I've got this conversation as proof, right? In this day and age, anyone can fake a conversation like this. Completely worthless. <laughs> you don't think there's a risk he would be convinced, even if I showed him in real life? There's no reason the two of you would meet in real life. <laughs> Hold on a second. You said that he messaged you. Your middle school friends. Yup. Speaking of being stupid, I'm looking right into your house right now. My house? Well, I guess I should say your parents' house. Anyway, I'm looking right at the front door. Uh, that's Chad's car? Wait, 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 wait. Why are you with Chad? Honey, I'm home. So this is your parents' house, huh? It's huge. You even lied about your parents being gone. You really had me going. But actually, you've been living here with Chad, huh? You must be pretty well off to be able to afford that second place where we always meet. And yet you've been pretending that your parents tossed you out and you can barely make ends meet? You know I actually don't have parents, right? I thought it was really fate. Meeting someone who had been through the same hardship and could understand my pain. I'm beyond words right now. Hold on a second. There's been some kind of mistake. There's no mistake. I met up with Chad as soon as I finished work. We checked each other's messages and made sure we understood the situation completely. What? Let's get your parents involved, and the five of us can all have a nice chat. Buckle up. Karen's parents live in what you might call a mansion. Right after that, Chad and I barged into the house. Her parents were completely shocked. Karen climbed out of a window and ran off. But Chad and I were both on the track team in middle school and high school, so there was never really any hope of her getting away. Afterwards, the five of us had a long and serious talk. We agreed that Karen would pay both me and Chad compensation for damages, and we would cut ties with her. We both ended up receiving several payments. Sorting this situation out has been a huge relief. I figured Karen's parents would end up just shouldering all of the payments. But contrary to my expectations, they decided to hold her accountable. Karen had to quit her nice, easy job at the flower shop by the library. And now she's working tirelessly morning and night to pay back all the money her parents had to cover. 
Chad and I were kind of curious about what exactly she was doing. So we asked her parents about it once. But they told us we were better off not knowing. About a year later, Chad and I were both dating new people. And you better believe that the very first thing we did was make sure they weren't the same person. 